Hello everybody and a big welcome to CDHTV Gameplay. Me and Pontus here and as always a huge veteran Mimo is back. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be back. We also have a new person here, Samurai Dance Ruler. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, I'm playing the new Shalayan Halar. It's a Naya midrange bit stacksy list that focuses on a bunch of one card combos with our commander because there are a bunch of them. There are like three or four, I think. I'm used on three, I think, maybe two. But it's just like some stacks, some like creature tutors because all our combos are creature based. So I brought Tassigo today as a farewell to Sinestra, who currently takes a break from CDH. There was this, there was a new card spoiled that kind of yeah, reinvigorated myself and it's the hoarding brute lord there's a one card combo if we are able to neoform tassigur into scholar of the lost trove or eldritch evolution it directly into the brute lord we can then find saw in half and use saw in half to get sacrifice and peer into the abyss once we resolve the peer we hopefully win the game i am playing the new rashmi and ragavan i played a lot of t-balt and paku yes first of first i think t-balt and paku is a lot better because this only exiles one card from one one player while T-Belt and Paco exiles one card for each player which is four times the stronger but I think it looks kind of fun because you still have the ability to potentially cast that card for free while you're also generating treasures so there's a value in mana here compared to the other two so I, I kind of want to try it out it looks like a fun thing otherwise it's just basically a artifact focused breach deck in a timer colors and with that, let's take a look at some opening hands. Two lands that don't really do much. Brainstorm, Vampiric Tutor. I guess I could go Vampiric Tutor into something, but it doesn't go into anything. So we're going to go ahead and go down to our next seven. This hand, on the other hand, might be worth it. We do have three lands. We have an Imperial Seal, but more importantly, we have a Phyrexian Metamorph, which can act as a discard. More like a sacrifice effect. But again, I'm not seeing any mana ramp, and that means we're not getting to turn two. So we're going to go ahead, restart. And there we go. This hand looks correct but it has nothing to go with it that's our six we're gonna go down to five we can do definitely better than this no land we're going down to four perfect this is exactly what i wanted we're going down to four but i know which four it's gonna be we're gonna be one two four i think that's that's how we go yeah we're, we're gonna go down that put this on bottom put this on bottom put this on bottom and uh that's our opening hand okay we have some ramp we also have the vampiric tutor for our eldritch evolution or neoform and we also have the culling ritual which is a truly busted card we might be able to use the culling ritual on turn two that would need us to not play the saga which kind of hurts but i still think that's good enough yeah uh, we will keep that so this hand contains a land that helps with colorless two cmc rocks this is very unsafe we have to mulligan this one no brainer toss it away second seven looks Oh, so desirable. We do have a brainstorm though, and we do have a dock side. We do have a red element, a pyroblast, an arcane signet, and a mox opal. This hand is so tempting. We don't need much for this to work out. Like that brainstorm could save this hand, literally. There's also a chance we have top deck a land as well, to be honest. Like, there, do I risk it? Like, if I don't hit a land on this brainstorm, I'm dead. Unless I can get Metalcraft that makes that Mox Opal somehow to tap for mana, but that, that's gonna be hard. A, a Sol Ring Mana Crypt could be a. If I top take a Sol Ring or Mana Crypt, I am going to risk it. I can get my commander into play very efficiently. I'm going up against almost blue decks around the table. So Pyroblast will be a good interaction here against everyone except Pontus, but we're, we're keeping this hand. I have a feeling that Dockside should be able to produce some mana with this hand getting our commander to play. And from that point, we're getting the game going. We just need to pray, worship Lady Luck a bit here. Let's look at what uh, Pontus is uh, mulliganing to. Let's look at the starting seven. So this hand is... Okay, we have a turn one dork. Well, Ragavan, but Ragavan is basically a dork, right? And a turn two stacks piece. But we don't really have that much mana. We have like most of the things we want, but the lack of mana it doesn't make this keepable. So I'll move on. This hand has more mana. It's a turn one Aven, but it's just rituals. So we're left with a turn one Aven and one land with no way to like actually get back into the game from that. So I'll win again again. This hand is kind of slow, but it's actually really good. Uh, turn one Deafening Silence is pretty great. It stops most things. We less in turn order. That's always going to be a problem for us, but nothing much we can do about it. But turn one Deafening Silence, turn two Thalia, turn three Helio, turn four Commander. That's a curve. I don't think we're playing Helio turn three. Optimally, we would, we would find some kind of fast mana to cast our commander turn, turn three instead of turn four and then 
cast Helio the win, turn four. But even if he doesn't, like just playing Thalia turn two, turn three, holding up a silence, that's fine, I think. We have everything we need, so I think this is a pretty good keep. And yeah, I'm gonna just... Ooh, interesting question. I actually think I bottom the silence here. We don't really have any card draw in this hand or in the deck, so I think having access to the lands is actually more important than silence. Having the silence would be great, but I don't think we can take that risk really. So I'll bottom the silence, which is unlike me. I would usually just keep two lands, but I also play different decks usually. So here we are. Draw. Never punished. Gonna tap two, lose two life, play a Talisman of Dominance, attempt to cast a Mystic Remora. I'll pass. I will draw a card for turn. Let's play a Pluto Delta. I will search for a Underground to go down to 39 life. I will tap that to cast a Soul Ring. You may draw. Not feeling too much. I I will go to my turn and draw a card. Mm, that didn't hit it. So we're gonna play this Wooded Foothills, crack it, find a volcanic island, and I'm not feeding in a fish. I'm uh, passing the turn. That's not a very environmentalist move of you. Take my turn. Now I'm turning some marsh flats. I would like to fetch. Finding a plateau, tapping it for a deafening silence. No fish feeding here, except for this one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can draw. And if that thing silence is going, okay, I'll pass the turn. Pay for my fish. Uh, we'll play a command tower and I'll pass my turn. Draw a card. Alrighty, so a bunch of stuff happened. Um, we could uh, use the upkeep to cast the Vampiric Tutor to have a turn one Rhystic study, but the Deafening Silence prevented that. And then on top of that, we drew a Coma, which is a stack piece we really don't want to draw. Uh, anyway, now, now it's here. We will, I think we play the Urza Saga and pass. See if the sticks, if the fish sticks around. Maybe go for the Empiric Tutor either for some interaction or the Rhystic Study after all and see if we can do something on turn three. The ultimate goal we are trying to resolve now is a Culling Ritual into Memomnic Betrayal because that's just a very, very broken two card combo because we get access to all the, most of the cards we, we destroyed. And let's see if we can get there. So we're just gonna, yeah, lean back, play the, the Saga, let the Saga tick up or maybe even rejuvenating springs to have a mana drain rejuvenating springs as my turn and pass my turn in your end step i'm gonna tap this and cast a brainstorm and i'm gonna give a card to the fish because i am an environmentalist i will draw one two three <laughs> no no it happened oh christ oh and i have to put two cards back send this one there and then this one go to our turn Untap, draw a card. So we're in a very annoying position. I mean, we're dead. Uh, feed, fish, or discard cards. We do have a red pyroblast plus a storm that we can interact with for no reason at all. <laughs> because we're not gonna draw land for like a while. I think what we're gonna do is destroy the fish so we not discard anything. That is giving him a card draw, but it's like helping out the table in the long run anyway. Another way you could look at it is like we're almost kind of dead, so why do anything? Not drawing a land, it was terrible. Like I said in the beginning, we were gambling, we're destroying that fish. We don't discard any cards, and uh, destroying fish is usually really good. I'm gonna tap this, cast Pyroblast on the Mystic Remora so I don't discard the hand size. That's okay. First I'll draw a card. And then I pass the turn. Move to my turn. Land for turn is a bountiful promenade. Here we have a choice between which stacks piece to play. I'm kind of a sus of Memo playing land passing with four mana up. I kind of don't know what he's playing at. I kind of think that might be Elvish Spirit Cave Adnos. That's pretty much the only thing I can actually think of. Could I play Tasigur otherwise? Tasigur with Neoform would lean towards me playing the Solar Slate Jailer, but since I kind of expect Adnos here, I think Thalia is the better call, both because post Adnos stuff and because he can't actually cast Adnos. I might be hyperfixating on the Adnos though, so this might just be wrong. I'm not entirely sure. Also, Mons stepped out, but the other two players both have mana up, so Thalia doesn't actually shut down interaction here, which is kind of a trap you can fall into sometimes, where you cast Thalia and just, that's basically just a Grand Abolisher for other opponents, which shouldn't be the case here. So I think Thalia is the great play, and that's what I'm going to cast. Tap two for this Thalia. No. <laughs> oh, well, I can't. I don't have any. It doesn't matter. I'm not costing anything, anyways. <laughs> yeah. And with Thalia in play, I'll pass the turn. Mons, can I trust you? You can trust me. I am not doing anything. <laughs> if you were to grab one card to your hand, what would you get? Land. <laughs> Tap one. <laughs> I'd like to uh, play Scheming Symmetry. I got. It's choosing me and Mons. I gotta choose targets first. Choose two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card and then shuffles their library and puts that card on top of it. I am uh, so happy. Uh, I have a land I'm gonna find. <laughs> 
So I'm finding uh, this card and putting that uh, on top of my library. To library, great. Samurai, in your end step, I will pay one extra for Thalia and I will cast this Vampiric Tutor. Grab a mysterious card, put it on top and move to my turn. Draw the mysterious card. I will play an Urza Saga as my land for the turn. Two colorless and one colorless extra to deploy a Rhystic Study. And if Rhystic Study resolves, I will pass my turn. I'm gonna go to my turn, untap and draw a card. Ah, Ancient Tomb. I am going to cast a Dockside Extortionist and I am paying for Rhystic Study. Good person. So I gain five treasures. So I actually have a fun option. I can either cast the One Ring or Rashmi and Ragavan. I actually think that the One Ring is a lot stronger than Rashmi and Ragavan because drawing cards from my deck comparing to maybe hitting something I can use from my opponent's deck it's just overall better to draw cards from my deck. Also the card draw from the One Ring actually scales heavily here. Now we are giving a card to Rhystic Study for this but it's fine. We're gonna go with the wrong ring. Five mana to pay for Falia, the One Ring and I'm not paying for Rhystic Study so you can draw a card. The one ring resolves and I will rule them all. And then I pass the turn. Land for turn will be a City of Brass. I will tap three mana for a Imperial Recruiter. Give me draw. Need to be triggered. I'm finding this Dockside. Then I'm passing the turn. I'll play a Phyrexian Tower. Tempt to cast Hidetsugu and Kairi. Ogre, Demon, Dragon. It has flying. It's a 5-4. And when it enters the battlefield, I draw three cards and put two cards from my hand on top of my library. When Hidetsugu and Kairi dies, I exile the top card in my library. Target opponent loses life equal to its casting cost. I may then cast it if it is an instant or sorcery without paying its mana cost. Ta I can sacrifice a creature with Phyrexian Tower and add black black. It's pretty sweet. ETB, draw three. Those would have been cool cards. <laughs> I guess I'll pass my turn. I will draw a card. Trigger my Urza Saga. Go up to two. City of Brass as my land for the turn. I will cast my commander, Tassico the Golden Thing. One black, two, three, four, and exile, uh, delve the two spells in my graveyard, five and six. I will tap my Rejuvenating Springs, take a damage off of City Brass, going down to 36 to pay one extra for Thalia to play this Mystic Remora. That will be all. I will pass my turn. In the end step, I'm going to tap this and draw a card. Then I'm going to go to my turn untap it and lose a life because of a bird encounter on it draw a card for turn i'll tap the one ring put a bird encounter on it and draw two cards i'm gonna play this taiga land drop ogre what was it like ogre dragon demon looked really powerful i want to cast a phantasmal image and uh, paying for rhystic study with my ancient tomb the image enters as a copy of the something something japanese thing so i will draw three cards one two three putting this one there and we're putting that one there and uh, that's it i'm uh, passing the turn after this discarding cards to hand size take my turn tap two for a dog side you may draw so Dox needs to be. Yeah, so sadly we're one one off Emil here because of our own Thalia, funnily enough. Developing the birthing pot is still pretty good. It's five mana, so we have two left, and we get down a rule of law. And next turn we can cast our commander, pull away Imperial Recruiter, and go infinite. We also have the Heliod in hand, so we're kinda like kinda safe in many ways. The other alternative is to cast our commander and cast the so soulessly jailer, but I think getting down the Archon is stronger overall, even though getting rid of Thalia is kinda sad. Uh, I'll tap four mana to cast this birthing pot. Paying to life. You may draw. So everyone is passing. So it's up to me. You're winning with this one, right, Pontus? No, not this turn. Pontus, what are you going to find with that thing this turn? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a stacks piece. Probably Archon. So here's the problem. I can counterspell this. But if I do, the chance of us losing to Mimo with his Rhystic Study is pretty good, considering I'm going to increase his hand size by two by interacting with Pontus here. And apparently Pontus can't win with his Birthing Pod at the moment. So I'm going to let Mimo with his eight cards in his hand and his Rhystic Study, feel the burden of trying to stop this. So with some removal spells or things in the future. So I'm actually going to pause on this. You can have your birthing pod, Pontus. Woo! I'll pay one mana and two life to sacrifice my sadly Thalia to pod. I'll sacrifice Hidetsugu and Kairi. I got a trigger, but game state check, I'll put it into command zone. But the top yep. card, and I'll pay the one <laughs> off the uh, Phyrexian. This is a mana ability, which does not use the stack, which means the next time game state actions will be checked after the two mana is generated and Hidetsugu and Kairi is engraved. Game state actions are then checked before triggers go on the stack. Uh, Hidetsugu and Kairi, I will move to the command zone. I have the trigger on the stack. I'll reveal the top card of my library, which will be Peer into the Abyss. Then I will select an opponent to lose seven life. 
I think there's only one more ad nos player maybe at the table. I will hit Nemo for uh, seven life. I will go down to 29. I will cast Peer into the Abyss. I have two mana floating. I will pay for the Ristic, not the Mystic, and I'll I target myself to draw. Draw a card, please be good. Nope. Sadly, this isn't it. I have to pass Mons. <laughs> <laughs> So I absolutely have to interact with this uh, because like saving the interaction versus Mimu, this is worse. Sure, Mimu currently has like nine cards in his hand, but if that pair into the abyss resolves, Samurai, the Demir player will have more and he will have answers. He will have spot removals, things he can do to remove the Archon, remove the Deathling Silence and things like that. And we don't want this pair to resolve. So I'm casting Force of Negation. Pitching copy artifact to the Force of Negation. Pay for the Ristic Study. Force of Negation resolves, countering the pair into the abyss. I'm finding Archon of Emeria with my Birthing Pod. Then I'm passing the turn. I'd like to play a Swamp. I'd like to cast a Windfall. Windfall resolves. I'm going to move to my instep and discard now. I will have a upkeep Mystic Remora trigger. I will use the Urza Saga to pay for the fish. Draw a card. Urza Saga will trigger. I will sacrifice it. I will find a Mox Diamond and discard a Scalding Tarn because Fetchlands are even worse with Archon. Tropical Island as my land for the turn. Rejuvenating Springs and cast a Deathrite Shaman. Move to discard. I will go to my turn, untap, and lose two life to the One Ring's Burden. I'll tap the One Ring, add a Burden counter on it, and and draw three cards. Play a Tropical Island as a land drop. Comes into play tapped because of Archon of Emeria. With a really big hand, I'm gonna cast a Gamble because I, I have a lot of cards I can discard to this. I am not paying for a Fish or Ristic. You can draw two cards. This one for a black, I will show you a opposition agent. As I've already cast a spell for turn, uh, I can't respond. It uh, resolves. Uh, you get to search out whatever you want. I will take your lightning bolt. Lightning bolt is yours. And then I pass turn discarding to hand size. Uh, cry a little bit about the op agents being in play. Land for turn is a ancient tomb. I'll pay two life and white to cast this Phyrexian Sensor. It's a new card. It's a 3 3 <laughs> and says that all players can just play one non Phyrexian spell each turn. And non Phyrexian creatures enter the battlefield tap. I'm paying for a stick. You got the lightning bolt, right? You can deal with this. <laughs> I'm not take two. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have flyers. I take two, go down to 27. My turn. I'll play a tapped underground C. I think we're good to just pass here. In your end step, I would like to tap for a red and cast the lightning bolt from exile, targeting the Archon of Emeria. No response, it dies. To my turn, I will untap. I have a Remora trigger. I will use the Soul Ring to pay two, putting a counter in it. I will draw a card. I will play a Breeding Pool, paying two life. Smox Opal as my spell for the turn. Just go ahead and pass. At the end of your turn, I'm gonna cast a Force of Vigor, paying for Ristic Study, pitching a green spell for it. I wanna target the Deafening Silence and the Ristic Study. No response to Force of Ristic Study dies. Then I'm gonna untap, lose free life to my One Ring, draw a card for the turn. I'm going to tap the One Ring, increase its uh, count, and draw four cards. This uh, One Ring is drawing me a lot of cards currently. I'm gonna play a basic Snow Covered Forest that ignores Archon of Emeria. So we are actually in a pretty good position. We're in an amazing position, <laughs> give and take. So we currently have a tutor for the Underworld Breach in our hand and our graveyard is enormous. We have a Lion's Eye Diamond in our hand. We have the Brain Freeze somewhere in the graveyard, I think, but there's an opposition agent in play. So we need to find a creature removal and then we're golden. We don't have that in our hand, so we're sitting here and digging for value. But now I actually think it's time for Rashmi to come into play. I'm gonna cast my commander, Rashmi and Ragavan. It comes into play tapped because of that Phyrexian creature. And because of stacks effect, this is my only spell for turn, so I'm uh, passing the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn would be a command tower. Uh, I'll take two damage to pay for a stick for my commander. So Shalai and Halar is a 3-3 Flying Vigilance for 4. Uh, and it has whenever one or more counters will be put on my creatures. I may ping my... It does that much damage to target opponents. If I put a counter on a creature, I'll ping someone for one. Or if I put three, I put ping them for three. That's my spell for a turn, so I'll pass the turn. We're going to try to fish out a counter spell. I want to just see what people are holding. I want to try to get some interaction out of hand, because people are being able to hold up way too much at the moment. Cast a very simple, very famous spell. I'm sure you all know it. The one, the only... Uh... Cyclonic Rift. Tap my Mox Opal and show you a Dispel. Uh, dispel Resolve, Psych Rift is Counterspell. I will pass my turn, I just draw and pass. In your end step, 
I will four mana to activate Tassigo. I will target Pontus. You can have a dispel. I will put the dispel into my hand. Still in your end step, I will tap the breeding pool for one blue. I will attempt to cast a chain of vapor targeting the rule of law effect. I pass on chain vapor. I pass as well. No, I, I'm not copying. You can go ahead and do your thing. To cast a noxious revival. I will target my culling ritual. I will put this culling ritual on top of my library. I have a mystic remora trigger. I will pay to cast a phantasmal image. I will let it enter as Doxite Extortionist. Doxite ETB. I'll sacrifice my two treasures. Floating two green. Three treasures. Undergrows Stadium as my land for the turn. I will cast a culling ritual. Floating three blue and one black. Uh, I will exile a land from Mons. I will respond with a swan song on that thing. I will go down to two blue and one black in the pool and show you the spell. I'm looking angrily at Pontus, someone who <laughs> made the dispel here in that person's hand. I will pass on this. I will let the dispel resolve and kill my swan song. Culling ritual back on the stack. I pass on calling ritual. I pass. Now, if I packed, he still has a lot of stuff for next turn. He still gets to draw a card. If I hold on to packed, this might be better. I don't want him to get like a lot of activations. Hey, show me counterspell numero dos. Packed in navigation. Targeting calling ritual. I turn it, of course, because I control Tassigo. I don't have a response to that. The pact will get countered by the fierce guardianship. One black mana. <laughs> yep. That's it. <laughs> Going down to 23 life to cast a birthing pod. I will respond with a pact of negation on the birthing pod. That's a good one. I will ac I will activate Tassigo. I will target. I mean, don't give him a counter spell here. <laughs> I will take the Eldritch Evolution into my hand. So fi final decision, Samurai? Yeah, final decision. It's probably an op agent, I'm pretty sure. And even if it wasn't, he can't make a decision now. <laughs> I will activate Tassigo one more time, not floating any mana. One. Two, three, four. This time I will target Pontus. So Pontus, I cannot win this turn. If you give him the Fierce, I might be able to inter interact with Mons. You can have this spell. I have four cards in hand and I would like to move to end step. No further effects. I will go to my turn, untap, lose life to my one ring. And I will pay for the Pact of Negation trigger, surviving the game. I'm going to draw a card for turn. I'm going to tap the one ring, add a counter to it and draw five cards. I'm going to cast a Mox Amber, triggering my Rashmi. I would like to exile the top card of Mimo deck with my Rashmi. You get a Mental Mystic. I also create a Treasure Token. Land drop will be a Cephalid Colosseum and I will uh, pass the turn here. Go for it. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be this Exotical Trick. I will cast this Mana Crypt. I'll tap Mana Crypt for two. Ca like to cast this Finale of Devastation. X, X, X is three. X is three. He gave me this bit I can't interact with Finale. That's cute, Pontus. Hey, Mimo, if I like, I don't know, like Mystical Tutor, would you grab a counter spell and play it? Yes, yes, 100%. I'll grab your Swan Song or whatever, whatever helps, or your Fierce. I'll respond with a Tainted Pack. Sure. I pass on Tainted Pack. One, two, three. Oh, 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 okay. There goes Citadel. Wow, you're digging deep. Plus the... Maybe it's Oracle in hand. Who knows? Mind games. Oh. There's a mana drain. Someone is looking for a very specific card. What are you digging for? There's a swan song. Okay. Apparently not. Oh. oh. And this? How many cards are left? Well, you're cutting away your entire library here. <laughs> I think that's the plan. Well, I have time twister to hand. Okay. Cards left. Left in library. Three. You passing on finale? I guess. I pass on finale as well. I pass on finale too. Finale resolves. I will search my graveyard. I'll put the healer into play. You got it. I would like to give my commander commander lifelink. Uh, I'll respond. I'd like to channel. It's passed. Targeting your commander. Yeah, with that, I'll just pass the turn. Play a flooded strand. Two blue, a blue, colorless, three blue. I'll attempt to cast a Jace, Builder of Mysteries. I'm going to respond by activating my Cephalid, forcing you to draw three cards. As I've heard, your library does not contain three cards. So I would like to kill you. Uh, last two cards were Force and Diabolic Intent. You got me. Feels nice to kill people. I will play a Morphic Pool to cast a Eldritch Evolution. I will sacrifice my command as additional cost, putting him in the command zone. So I know you have a Dispel. Looking angry at Pontus. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try, dude. I'm, I'm gonna let this one resolve. I pass on Eldritch Evolution. I pass. Uh, didn't think we get that far. 50 cards in library left. Put a Scholar of the Lost Trope into play. I can basically cast the Instant or Sorcery or Artifact Spell from my graveyard without paying its mana cost. I will choose my Peer into the Abyss. 
targeting myself. Draw 24. I will play a Lotus Petal. I will cast a Jeweled Lotus. Sacrifice Jeweled Lotus to recast my commander. Five, so I will exile five cards, which will be five lands. I will cast a Chromox. I will imprint a Assassin's Trophy to cast a Dark Ritual Wish Cloud Talisman to cast a Sacrifice. Scholar of the Lost Trove is additional cost. Seven black mana to my mana pool. I have I have seven black floating. I will use six of the black and convoke with Tassigur and Op Agent. Hoarding Broodlords is a 7-6 flying dragon. When it ETBs, I search my library for a card, exile that card face down, then shuffle my library. For as long as it's exile, I may cast it. I will exile a mysterious Thunder. Thassa's Oracle, Carpet of Flowers. Cast a Getaxian Probe, I will target Pontus. I have a response to your Getaxian Probe. I am going to cast a Brain Freeze by sacrificing this treasure. And what does cost? That's what cost is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm going to try to mill you 33 cards. 36 cards, including the Brain Freeze, to try to kill you. Okay, there was no need to cast a good prop. Anyways, I respond. I use my I use my Black Floating to activate my Wishclaw. I will grab a mysterious card called Veil of Summer and put that into my hand to cast a Veil of Summer in response to all your Brain Freeze triggers. If I just had one more blue mana for my Flusterstorm <laughs> here, we could have been in a... We could have had an amazing kill here. Uh, but sadly, I don't have that blue mana, so I'm gonna pass on this. Veil resolves, draw a card. Brain freeze fizzles, Getaxian probe targeting Pontus. Second effect, I draw a card. Second main, I make two green off of my carpet targeting Mons. I will cast a saw in half targeting my hoarding Broodlord. I will respond. I will soul partition the Broodlord in response. I will respond by casting a Force of Will. I will exile a Gilded Drake and pay one life going down to nine. Force of Will resolves, countering Soul Partition. I make two copies. I will have two ETBs. I will search. So we exiled two more cards with the Brute Lord. And what we'll do now, we will cast the cards one by one to assemble a win. We will start off by convoking with one Brute Lord to cast a Mana Vault from Exile. Lotus Petal cast a Thassa's Oracle from Exile. With the ETB on the stack, we will convoke the last card from Exile by tapping the other dragon to cast a Demonic Consultation. I will exile my whole library. GG. Why did we give the Tassigur player Eldritch Evolution and Dispel? Yeah, sadly I just drew two tutors of that Windfall and Op Agent just shut out the whole game plan. Yeah, uh, we made some minor misplays, but the main one was we did not pay attention to see that Mons had a uh, Southwood Coliseum. Did not pay attention to that. That's my bad. I should have gone down to um, five cards, I think. Another W. That was a wild grind and that showcase that you have to stay concentrated until the very end.